Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and today we are talking about the talk El- Eternal Truth by Elder Pingree. Um, I'm interested in doing this talk. I don't know if I'm like looking forward to it or dreading it just a tiny bit, but we'll get into it. Uh, in the meantime, definitely read this on your own first, uh, get your own promptings and inspiration and everything, and then you can come listen to my crazy thoughts on it. Um, it won't be crazy, but I feel a little crazy doing this talk. So, of course, this talk is about truth and about eternal truth. And some of what he talks about in here is hard for me, and I will talk about why when I get there, but first off, he starts with a story, and they were, he and his wife were called to be full-time mission leaders, and they made a goal to memorize all of their missionaries' names before they got to the field. So they had flashcards, and they memorized all of their names and faces. Um, my mission president and his wife also did this, uh, their kids did too, but I can't remember. But yeah, when they first, like I, I had a mission president for the first month and a half I was there and then we got a new mission president, got new mission leaders and they did this, they had to memorize everybody's names. And so our first time meeting them, uh, sister Andrews, like she would walk up and she would cover the, our name tag with like with her hand and be like. Uh, your sister so and so or your elder so and so and she did that with um, President Andrews too. It was really cute Anyway, so he said Of course when they got to the field they had introductory conferences and their nine-year-old son Who was also, you know, uh, memorizing all these names was calling them by their first names and Elder Pingree was like, I went over and said, hey uh, We have to remember to refer to the missionaries as elder or sister and he was like, Dad, I thought we were supposed to memorize their names. <laughs> and so basically his kind of thing was, you know, he thought he did what was, he did what he thought was right based on his understanding, right? And so I really actually love this as like a starting off point, right? Um, the way that we understand things, the way that we understand the truth or promptings or whatever, right? We're not going to be judged for that. God understands like, well, that's not what I meant when I prompted, said that prompting that I can see. I, uh, as kind of a, another analogy, uh, I work in construction. And so we have these big old plans, right? We have pages and pages and pages of, of floor plans and blueprints and all this stuff. And the, um, what, what the interior designer wants, well, it's like, it, right, it's the compilation of interior design, um, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, architect, right? So like all this in all the intentions and all of the wants of the client and then how it all works together with physics <laughs> and then all the way down to the finished project product. We're working on a big project, big renovation project. So of course we have like pages and pages of all the demolition that had to be done because the renovation, right? They're taking all these stuff out and then all these pages of what they want put back in <laughs> and how they want it to look eventually. And then up past that, all the details of every single mechanical drawing, plumbing drawing, electrical drawing, everything, right? And so we've had some issues with these drawings, just not being super clear or having mistakes on them. And we've had many, many conversations with um, our product managers being like, okay, well, we did it this way because this is how we interpreted the drawings. And they'll be like, oh, well, the drawings say this. Oh, and they'll look at the drawings. They're like, okay, I see how you would understand it that way, <laughs> right? And like they're in the meetings with the client. They're in the meetings with the architect and the interior designers. And so they know in their head, like what the intent was, but we're not in those meetings so we're going purely off these drawings and we put something in they're like that wasn't supposed to be put there and we were like well it's on the drawings and they're like oh i see how you could see it that way and so i think that's definitely like 
the gospel that's life right it's like you give the same direction to four different people and they take it in four different directions it's like writing prompts or art prompts right you say oh uh write a story about a princess falling for a prince like you're gonna get four very different stories right it's the same premise um but it's gonna be different genres it's gonna be different themes it's gonna be different characters like four different writers have four different like voices so even if it's a similar storyline it's gonna be told differently from a different voice and focusing on different things um so I'm going to keep that in mind as we talk about truth, right? Because he talks about truth, eternal truth. (laughs) That there are some things that are just right and wrong that never, never change. And there's something that's hard for me to grasp as someone who (laughs) um, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm like a writer and like I don't know like i understand in math there's one right one right answer right in in science there's one right answer or whatever right like two plus two is four that's not you're not gonna get five out of two plus two um but like when it comes to people when it comes to people's experiences my truth quote unquote right the way that I experience something is going to be different than the way somebody else experiences this exact same event, the exact same thing. And so what's true for me is not true for this other person. So truth is something that's really hard for me to like grasp and like get my mind around. Anyway, so of course we're talking about gospel truths. So that's a little bit easier for me to like, but I get a little twitchy. So I think that's why I'm kind of uncomfortable like talking about this. But anyway, we'll get more into that in a minute. Um, but oh, this whole thing about truth, right? He kind of talks about what truth is and how it's described and, and kind of uh, defined in the scriptures. He says, The Lord has taught us in scripture that truth is knowledge of things as they are and as they were and as they are to come. It, is not, it was not created or made and has no end. Truth is absolute, fixed, and immutable. In other words, truth is eternal. And this is hard. N- I, not this hard. I like this. Like, this whole kind of definition is really great. I think the hard thing about the, the word truth is the word has come to mean a lot of different things in the world, right? As people, we use the word truth for a lot of different things. It has different contexts, and this is with a lot of different words, right? The word faith is hard for people because it's been used in very many different ways. The word hope is hard to, like, define, right? Um, and so, um, anyway, so, like, just to explain more about why I'm feeling twitchy this, this episode, but I do like this, right? It's the truth, the knowledge of things as they are, as they were, and as they are to come and truth is eternal and he lists some of these truths a little bit later i'll get to that in a minute but anyway so he talks about the network of revelatory relationships that end up with us giving truth Uh, that god is a source of eternal truth he and his son work in harmony Uh, he and christ work in harmony in with principles and laws and they create worlds and they nurture each of us right um and they want us to understand these eternal truths and so they have the holy ghost that testifies of all truth he testifies to the prophet and to us and so the prophet receives truth from god for everybody for the whole earth right um we learn those truths from prophets in the scriptures and also from living prophets now at general conference and through other official channels and then at the very kind of end of this process is us that god expects us to look for and recognize and act on truths act on these promptings and how how these truths play into our lives is you know up to us and how that's going to like work best in our lives, how we're going to you know, follow these commandments and how it, how it works for us. Um, 
he gives a couple of like examples of um you know things to kind of check on as we're looking at truth and we're trying to recognize truth you know is it taught consistently in the scriptures or by living prophets is it confirmed by like is it being confirmed by the holy ghost for me um and then once we confirm a truth for ourselves with the holy ghost with whatever and we put that truth into practice then we understand it more and more and more um it's an action right this is also an act of faith is we are we're going to understand something more as we do it um and this is a very basic law of like learning in general right like the you're going to learn to write by writing you're going to learn to do math by doing math equations you're going to learn how to answer phones at your job by answering the phone 50,000 times and be in like, practicing, right? You're going to learn how to make a, a three-pointer in basketball by doing it over and over and over again. Um, learning theoretically is great, and that's a great start, but actually going out and doing it is what's going to, to change your life and what's going to make you have a deeper understanding of something. So... And then this is kind of where it got even a little bit more twitchy for me. He talks about trusting God when truth is not yet revealed. And he gives a couple of examples of like the Lord's counsel and doctrine and covenants to Joseph and Emma Smith. And then he says this at the very end. He says, I too have sought answers to heartfelt questions. Many answers have come. Some have not. As we hold on, trusting God's wisdom and love, keeping his commandments, and relying on what we do know, he helps us find peace until he reveals the truth of all things. This is the answer that we often get, right? When we have questions about the gospel, when we have questions about the church that have not yet been revealed or that you know we don't have answers for. Usually they're very, you know, hot and heavy topics that have been talked about for a long, long time. They're very near and dear to people's hearts, right? We are often told to wait on the Lord, to trust in God's wisdom and love, that he's going to do, he's going to reveal things when he wants to reveal things. That as we keep the commandments and rely on what we do know, then, you know, we're going to have the peace that we need until we have those answers. I believe this wholeheartedly, right? Like, I rely on this. I rely on what I do know. I have questions. I have so many questions. And I struggle with a lot of things in the gospel and in the church and how it relates to the world. And I have a lot of questions for God when I get up there. I have got a lot of questions to ask him. And so I have to rely on what I do know. And I have to try my best to, to do what he's asked. Um... And I am, I try to trust, right, that he has perfect timing and that it's going to all come out and we're all going to have these answers when we need them and when we can handle them. But this answer sometimes is hard for me. It feels a bit placating. It feels a bit like, just wait, just wait and it's going to be fine. But anyway, that's just me. <laughs> and so this kind of goes into the next section well, he talks about doctrine, the difference between doctrine and policy, which we talk about a lot. A lot, of, a lot of general authorities have talked about this, right? Doctrine doesn't change what policy does, and policy is the, the way that we um, implement and apply doctrine in the way that the world changes. So policy from 50 years ago doesn't make sense now. Um, that also kind of seems placating. And so this goes into the last thing, was te teaching eternal truth. That once we have eternal truth, once we have had experiences with God, we are encouraged to share it, right? We're encouraged to share that knowledge with others. And he gives some examples, and then he talks about speaking truth in love, and that um, truth taught without love can feel like judgment. And... I think, I don't know, here, I'll, uh, I'll read this, this quote first, and then, I'll, and then I'll talk about how this kind of relates to what we were just talking about. 
He says, both truth and love are essential for our spiritual development. Truth provides the doctrine, principles, and laws necessary to gain eternal life, while love engenders the motivation needed to embrace and act upon what is true. And that's something that we talked about a few episodes ago too, right? Of like motivating with love, that that is the most powerful motivator. Um, Motivating with fear and judgment and whatever uh, may work for a time, but doesn't produce lasting change in our lives or in the lives of others and I think why that like those phrases of like oh well doctrine and policy are different doctrine stays the same but policy doesn't or the like just wait on the Lord and not even for just like questions but like anything right like oh the Lord's timing wait on the Lord for the Lord's timing or just focus on what you know or put it on the shelf these kind of platitudes that we use feel like platitudes when they're not spoken with like empathy and compassion and love. When it's used as a way to just shut down somebody's questions or kind of gaslight them into thinking their questions aren't um, valid. Like, it's good to ask questions. It's good to have questions. Our church started because of a question, right? We started because Joseph Smith had a question. And And so when they're used to kind of shut down or to like, like you were talking about earlier with like, or maybe it was last episode talking about emotions are very healthy. And so when we use like kind of platitudes like, oh, well, you'll see them in the next life to kind of shut down and to like, even if it comes from a good place, right? Sometimes it can feel like you're just dismissing someone's grief or dismissing someone's just discouragement. Um like for example with infertility it could be really really i don't have experience with this but i know people who have and that like phrase of like well it's all in the lord's timing can feel really terrible to somebody who's waiting to have who's trying to trying to have children who's trying to like fulfill this commandment that we've gotten right to multiply and replenish the earth and it can feel really terrible if somebody's like well it's all in the lord's timing it feels really ingen- like not genuine and really unsympathetic and really not compassionate. And so, like, I don't know, have a couple of questions in this, in this vein, right? Have you ever been taught a truth or been corrected um, in a way that felt like it was not done from a place of love? And how did that make you feel? how can you teach or bear testimony with love we talked about this with sister uh sister runia in a saturday evening session she talks all about like um you know our family relationships are the most important relationships and so um you know, trying to be positive and not like a toxic positivity of like, it's all good, nobody's ever done anything bad, it's totally fine, but like leading from that pace of love. And really, like I talked to, I've, I've talked about this so many times, I've had experiences, especially as a missionary, I have a like very, very, very black and white experiences, right, of district leaders or zone leaders or whatever, APs, and leadership or even sister training leaders who I knew loved me and I knew that I could go to them and I could ask them questions and I could ask for help and they wouldn't write me off like this. They wouldn't say, oh, just wait on the Lord's timing. They would sit and they would listen and they would mourn with me and then we'd try and figure something out together. And then I had leaders who I didn't ever feel comfortable enough going to because I knew they would just brush it off and they would say, oh, well, you're not being obedient enough. You're not doing well enough in your personal study or you're not doing well enough in your companionship study or you're not teaching enough or you're not doing enough. Try doing more and then come back to me and see how you're doing. And that wasn't like, and maybe that was what they thought was from a place of love. Fine. But like, it did not, it did not work. And so when I became an STL, I was called an STL, my companion and I, that was like, 
we clicked really well and we were like both very much in agreement that our goal as STLs were was to make sure our sisters knew that we loved them and they could come to us for anything and we're like if, if we do that we have um we've done it we've succeeded right and absolutely obviously we had other roles we ran trainings we um like there were systematic things that we did we did splits and we did all these things right but that was like our goal was to know for them to know that they could come to us and that we would help them and there were we had a few times where we were we felt like we were successful in that and one of them was one of the sets of sisters we were covering they didn't get covid but they were around someone of course this was during the pandemic like right in the thick of it they were around someone who got, um, or was, um, COVID positive. And so of course they had to get tested and they had to quarantine for like three days until they got their test results back. And they were like, we're pretty sure we don't have it, but like, we're going to be in quarantine over P day. And so we can't go grocery shopping. Like we have to stay home. Will you go grocery shopping for us? And we were like, yes, absolutely, we will go grocery shopping. And so we stopped by their house and got like their cards and we got their list. They texted us their list that we that they needed and we bought all of their stuff for them. And I remember hanging up from that phone call where they asked us to do that. My companion and I looked at each other and I was like, I think I was tearing up and I was like, we did it, sister. Like they know that they can ask us for things. They know that they can come to us and we'll help them. Like that was like the moment right it felt felt so so good that that they knew that like we would help them out um and i know it kind of sounds like a silly thing right like of course you're gonna go grocery shopping for them you're gonna say no but it did it felt so good having having had experiences with not like less than stellar leadership in the past it felt good to be like okay i've done my job or i've done my best right I've, i've put in this effort into this relationship with these sisters they they know that they can come to me um and so that's what i want you to think about think about times where you have been taught or corrected or whatever and it felt like it, it did not come from a piece of love it felt very dismissive or placating or kind of falsely positive right um very it often feels very surface level um and how did that make you feel and how can you you know with friends or family or coworkers or whatever um teach or bear testimony or just interact right from a place of love place of empathy and compassion and really try to understand where they're at meet them where they're at and, and try and help them um that's really all i've got for you definitely check out all the footnotes he has 63 footnotes i think this is the most footnotes i've ever seen um of course i have like i don't have the physical copy of the ensign but i'm like trying to picture (laughs) i'm trying to picture like the printed version of this talk having 63 footnotes at the end of it oh my goodness i cannot i cannot wrap my head around that um most of them are scriptures uh, most of them are scriptures and there's some like um like elaborations um there's some quotes of course his last few like i said earlier he lists a bunch of like these are eternal truths that i've come to love like that are anchored to my soul and they're you know principles that um have been discussed even today and in just in general conference today and so the the last i don't know like 20 maybe <laughs> footnotes are all those and he has some elaborations and then a couple of them are just like the scripture they come from so um but yeah definitely check those out i'm sure there's lots of goodies in there to, to on top of 
all the stuff here I talks about in his talk. So, um, thank you all for listening or watching. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube, or on your podcatcher of choice, wherever you're listening to me. And I love to hear from you guys. So messages and emails and comments, your views. I love to hear your thoughts and experiences. So I'll talk to you next time.